So one of the things I really like about this game, and it's, it's number 10 on the list right now, is it the effects to the enemies. And what I mean by that is, you know, say you're, you're fighting a cleaner and he's got a, a, a little gas pack on his, on his back or whatever the hell so to, to fuel his uh, flame torch. Well, his flamethrower. Uh, you shoot that a couple of times. Maybe you just hit it just in the right spot and you see just a little burst of flame popping out and then all of a sudden he just blows up and it does like a big area damage to all the enemies around so that's what I'm talking about I especially see it to those types of enemy or those types of enemies as the cleaners those those explosives and everything but also just to being able to suppress the enemies get a couple of headshots in and then all of a sudden they will just jump down behind cover for a while because you pretty much just scare the shit out of them and I, I think that's absolutely amazing I mean there's not really much more that can be said it's pretty awesome I think it's pretty uh uh, realistic and in-depth. So another thing we have is the visuals and the sound. Now I know a lot of people had some pretty big gripes about the, the visual graphics uh, ba based off of its original E3 presentation, but I'll tell you what, I love the graphics. I love how uh, amazing and in-depth it all is. And the sounds as well, like rather I have my headphones plugged in or I'm just playing on my TV, just the absolute sounds, all these little small sounds you'll hear, it's so precise and clean and I, I, I think it's just really adds to the experience and the ambiance that you're, you're truly in a, a post-apocalyptic post -apocalyptic New York uh, after a massive uh, disease, uh, disease pretty much takes over from someone poisoning the cash supply on Black Friday and um, it, it just it's just another one of those things it's kinda like when you played Doom 3 back in the day you, you turn off all the lights put your headphones on and you play the game and you can hear people just shouting off in the distance it's kind of that's kind of what reminds me of it allows you to immerse yourself further into the game Another thing that really adds to the overall experience of playing The Division is how you can do multiple different approaches to the way you accomplish missions or side missions or any other quests that may come up. So if you want to go in guns blazing, you can do that with a shotgun, assault rifle, whatever it, whatever it is you want to do. And one of my particular uh, favorite things to do in a mission, or at least when I come up with a group of enemies, is I love to use the sticky bomb gun. And so I go in, I pop that off on the group of people, and I take out most of their health, as you can see in the clip there. And uh, it just it helps get those get those enemies' health down a little bit further. And then I could just finish them off with my gun. Another way you can even approach it is uh, by using a marksman rifle. I team up with a lot of buddies that they, they just sit there and just pop, pop, pop. Takes people out with those headshots. They'll suppress them, but they'll pop right back up and they'll just take them out with those headshots. And that's always another great way to approach the missions. Next up, we have the ability to upgrade your base. Now. I know it may seem may not seem like a big deal to a lot of other people, but I really like how it adds that next ability, to, uh, that, that, that added feature of customization. So obviously towards the very end of the game, you're going to have all three of your wings, your security, your tech, and your medical wings completely maxed out. But in the process of getting to that maxed out stage, you can upgrade it the way you want to. So if you want to throw more into medical in the beginning, you can. And it, it, it opens up a lot of different perks and talents and skills, which lets you customize how you want to play the game. Just kind of goes back into how you, how you, like I said, how you wish to approach each mission. It also applies to how you want to play the game. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm a sucker for that type of thing. You know, I grew up on RPG games, so I really like the added choice there. And at number six, we have the group play. Now, I, I, I picked this one at number six because of how convenient it is to team up with your friends from the menu screen, and you can jump in and out of the groups. You could jump in with some other friends. And I noticed that when I re originally released a video, a, a Rage video on the air codes that Division was having at launch, and they're still having to this day, uh, I ended up getting a lot of very positive feedback from other people who are experiencing the same issues, and a lot of these people actually wanted to play with me, and uh, so I was able to use that group play 
extensively and I, I I love it so much just how like I said convenient and easy to use so um, props to you Ubisoft for at least putting effort into that next up we have the proximity voice chat now <laughs> like I said uh, some of these things a lot of people don't think is a big deal I put it so high up on the list because I thought it was absolutely hilarious so me and my buddies were using that group play. We go into the dark zone. Now, when you're using the PlayStation uh, party chat, no one else in the dark zone can hear you besides who is actually within your group. But you can still hear other people. <laughs> and so uh, a lot of times, I remember one of these times I was playing with a couple buddies of mine. Uh, I think it was like Scar, uh, Reaper, and uh, like I said, I'm just shot at the end, and uh, JR. And uh, there was this kid who was sc scoping out at us. He had him and two of his buddies were playing, and they were starting to talk shit like, oh, we're higher level than them. I bet we could take them. I bet we could take them. And uh, they started shooting, and uh, we already were prepared because we could hear him talking shit. And so we, we, got, we got them all down, and we looted their shit. And it, basically, we just cleaned him out. And I really wish I knew this guy's name. I, all I remember was Cowboy something. So anybody, any one of my buddies that actually played with me during that time, if you remember his name, throw him down in the throw it down in the comments because I really want to remember who this person was. It was so funny because the entire time we were in the dark zone after that, you could just hear him ranting and raving. Oh my God, these guys took my shit. These guys took my shit. And this guy had to this kid, actually I should say kid had to have been like 10, 12 years old because oh my God, they took my shit. It was so funny. I, I absolutely love it. And I guess it is pretty convenient if you're not in a group and you use the proximity chat because then you could chat with people and be like, hey, listen, man, I don't have any loot. Or, hey, listen, I just my, this is my very first purple drop. Please let me have this. I'll help you out with anybody. So it's a really awesome feature to have. Next up, we have the shooting mechanics. Now, I, like I said, did not grow up playing a lot of shooter games. I played mostly RPGs. You, know, you swing, a, swing a sword, swing an axe, throw a magic spell at some dragons, stuff like that. So I didn't jump into shooting games until later on in life. You know, after I was an adult with like Mass Effect, and I was a third-person shooter, and then, of course, you know, Destiny, and then this. And so I actually got used to first-person shooters I, I took onto it pretty well, and I'm kind of surprised because I played most games in third person, and I was leery about the division having third person uh, aspect to your shooting because when I played it on the uh, Mass Effect series, and I love the Mass Effect series, I think it was absolutely amazing, but the shooting mechanics sucked. The skills, everything about it, I hated. Um, it was it was hard to play, but I just, I loved it for the story and everything else like that. So I was leery, but I was going to do it anyways. And I played the game, I played the beta, the closed beta and the open beta, and the, the controls are actually rather easy to use. It, it's, 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 you pick it up, it's easy to use, it's easy to master, and it, it's simplify, uh, simple controls. There's nothing too crazy about it. You don't have to you know, retrain yourself on how to use a controller. And... Uh, it, it allowed for me to play the game as long as I have, and I'm already 50 hours into the game. Next up, we ha have a feature, or whatever, a, a, a mechanic in the game that I truly feel should be in more games that have any form of <laughs> extensive running, like running simulators, and that is unlimited sprinting. <laughs> now... In RPG games, one of my most favorite RPG series out there is Elder Scrolls, and you have a stamina, and if you do a hard, uh, uh, like a heavy, a heavy hit on an enemy, or you're running, you only can do that for a, a certain amount of time, and then you're out. And it, it kind of doesn't make sense to me because in a lot of those games, you're playing someone who's, you know, the chosen one or has special abilities and powers, and you'd think they would allow unlimited sprinting in that. But no, in, in the game like The Division, they, that's supposed to be based off of a lot of realism just with futuristic tech, it, unlimited sprinting. I mean, like I said, it's good because it's a, it's a fucking running simulator, but still, it's, a, it's, it's 
allowed for me to have much more fun with the game. I don't have to worry about running 10, 20, 30 seconds and then I'm going to stop and wait for my stamina to build back up. No, instead my stamina is tied to my health, which just goes to how much damage I take and how much I can handle before my character has to, <laughs> dies and has to go to the next loading screen. So, yeah, that's awesome. And number two, we have the ability for you to tweak your gear and basically upgrade your weapons with mods. Now, it's pretty self-explanatory, but it, it's been one of my favorite features in the game is the fact that you can take a weapon and you can compare the different weapons for their base stats and then you can upgrade it even further with different scopes like if you want to turn a regular marksman rifle like a scout rifle into a sniper rifle you can do that and uh, th there's, not, there's not much more that can actually be said about it it's awesome and at number one we have the skills and abilities and once again how expansive it is so when I first started the game, I immediately went to the uh, ability to heal myself and heal others, and I went and got the uh, the sticky bomb, the ones you can shoot at people and just really kind of get their health down. And that's good. I mean, it helped me to basically be a really good DPS player or healer in, in, in many cases because I'm not always going to be a kind of guy who likes to play as a tank. And I was actually really surprised that Ubisoft was going to do that, and... I, I know that they were kind of showing off uh, uh, the ability to have a, a lot of RPG elements, but once again, I'm just really surprised, and I'm 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 very glad that they did because after Destiny, after putting so much time into that and having the abilities on there as well, I was kind of fed up with the whole shooting aspect for a while. I was tired out, and I wanted to go back to just you know playing my traditional RPG games, you know your Elder Scrolls, your not even your fallouts, but like your Elder Scrolls and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, Lords of the Fallen, whatever it may be. So that that is why it's my favorite feature is because it has allowed me to continually want to grow my character beyond just, oh, okay, I have some good, I have, I have some good weapons. Now what? No, it lets you have your abilities and your different skills and then allows you to slap on mods and stuff like that. So, thank you Ubisoft for doing that. <clears throat> now, that is my top 10 things I love about The Division. Now, I'm doing this through PlayStation's built-in share factory. It, I actually hit my max clips for commentary. I didn't just do one straight shot. I actually broke it up. And so, I'm just going to include this into this, this uh, clip right here. Uh, all the different shout-outs of just people that I played with that have been absolute joy hanging out with and chatting with and really building up that rapport. You know, I want to thank everybody, every single person who watched any of my YouTube channels. Rather it was to troll me and throw a hate comment in there or it was to give me some positive feedback. Even if you were spamming me, asking me to check out your YouTube channel, even though you have like 20,000 uh, subscribers and I only had like six to begin before I even released a first division video so here goes my shout outs and these are people these, these are the names of them on the PlayStation Network I'm not giving out real names I'm just giving out what their gamer tags are so for anyone who got this far into the video thank you here are the shout outs for <clears throat> people who watched my division rage video and really just made my overall experience that much better with the division and I look forward to playing with you guys some more. So <laughs> I'm going out. I'm going alphabetically. So here we go. Uh, Captain Badgers, Captain Badgers, my friend. You sound like uh, kind of another version of Michael Sarah, but you have just been an absolute delight to play with. You're so funny. How you'll sit there and just like you'll 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 be, you'll just talk shit like yeah, bitch, take that, take that. But you'll have just such soft-spoken voice, and it's absolutely amazing. Uh, crying fire once again kid dude you you were already a higher level than me and we jumped on and played and that was pretty fun and we also have uh, let's see here JR JR4 or JR4 ass word SS word I just call him JR JR dude 
you have uh, kind of been there from the beginning when it comes to playing this game, and uh, you know, thank you for helping me out. You re you really, when you were a higher level than me, you just really helped me get into the dark zone, and you stuck with me through a lot of those stupid missions. And you even helped me out when I couldn't chat at the time, but you would still team up with me and help me out through the missions, and we would just PlayStation message each other. So next one, we have uh, Dark Knight Alex. Now, he's actually been my buddy for a little over a year now. We started playing The Division, then we played Elder Scrolls Online, uh, and, and then we played, uh, sorry, we started playing Destiny, then Elder Scrolls Online, then The Division. So you've been a good friend, dude, and I, I really appreciate you just sticking with me and helping me out through everything. Uh, let's see here. Uh, t -t 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 Next up, we have Royal Massive. Now, you jumped on with another one of my buddies further down the list, and uh, you just been, you've, you've been a lot of fun to work with, and, and uh, thank you for hel helping me out through all that stuff. Now, we have another one, uh, Scarface underscore 187. Scarface, you're a funny dude. I remember I think you were there for the cowboy guy, and you were just taunting him like no other after he started talking shit. It was absolutely hilarious. Uh, Sir Linares, L-I-N-A-R-E-S. Sir, you, you, once again, I, I can say the same thing about a lot of these guys. You guys are all just really funny. I'm going to work down the list because I know I'm running out of time. The Reaper Lives. So The X Reaper X Lives. Uh, once again, another funny ass dude and been a joy to play with. Uh, T Snake 20. And for those who don't understand what the T part is, that stands for Terminator. <laughs> and uh, he's a funny guy. He's actually featured in a couple of the clips on this video. Once again, a joy to work with. And let's see here. Just getting all my buddies lined up. And a buddy I played with uh, in, the, in the beta and through a lot of other games too. So he's not featured in any of the clips. No serious. Knock. Dude, you've. Uh, there have been times where I come home from a really shitty day from work. I'll jump on. I'll jump on uh, Destiny or the Division Beta or ESO, and you've been an absolute delight to just hang out with and uh, chat with. And you're a funny kid. You're you are a fucking achievement hunter, completionist through and through. But just an absolute fun guy to work with. Anyways. Thank you to everybody who's watched my videos, who's hit the like button or even the unlike button. Um, I'm not doing this for a career, but I am going to have those ads in there. You know, any, any money I actually do get so far, I've earned like $2. So thank you all, to all of you because I can now buy a candy bar. <laughs> but uh, please subscribe if you like my stuff. Hit the like button. Th throw down a comment. And uh, I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much.